Ah, here we are, ESPN FC <laughs> with the men in blazers. We're on ESPN3. We're on ESPNFC.com. We don't know. We can't see it. Hopefully, you can see us there. Um, I can't make this flag <laughs> fly at half mass, David. <laughs> it is. Well, you can. You can put it down a little. Uh, Rog, yeah. I know you, you often pretend on the podcast yeah. during our live shows that you don't care about England. Yeah. But I'm not sure I've ever seen a man more deflated than you are right now. I'm not deflated, Dave. I, Whoa. You, you know what I feel a little bit like? Are you pulling a surprise on me? No, I'm, I'm a bit sad. Okay. Because there were moments when I got a little bit, you know, tingly. Yeah. Nipple tingly. Oh, it's In been a game, day for nipple tingles. I thought, oh, before the game, we're talking about the England game. Yeah. Sorry, Costa Rica. Sorry, we'll spoiler alert. We'll get to you. Italy 2, England 1. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about it. Yeah. There were moments in the game mm -hmm. when I had something I've not had watching England in decades, it's a thing called hope. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, I had hope, a little bit of hope. There's the old England, the Gerard England, the Lampard England. They were still there. The Andy Carroll England, all that England. This was a new England. This it wasn't. Was Raheem Sterling England. He had a great game. La, 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 England. He didn't play that well. Ross Barkley England. These he young didn't play guys that well either. who look like Khaleesi's Unsullied from Game of Thrones. And I got hope, David. Well, Sturridge played very well. Um... I thought Sterling played very well. Certainly England got some good performances out of their young they players. Did. And they did look more aggressive going forward. They had plenty of chances. Frankly, Rooney had a great chance to go and stick one in the back of the net there and make it 2-2 Yeah, two -two but he dared to Josie. He dared um, to Josie. Can we just say very quickly... But Italy was still the better team, Rush. Well, we'll get to them. We'll get yeah. to them. We did, England did things that we've never seen an England team done in my lifetime. At attack, you mean. Pass. They did pass. Move. We haven't seen the stats yet care. for the passing stats. Well, caring, that was a good stat. About 73% yeah. of the team seem to actually care. Yeah, but can I offer the counterpoint now? Well, the point I'm going to throw out there is they should play all their games in a jungle. Counterpoint, David. <laughs> we don't have many jungles in England. In vain. We got Sherwood a Forest. Jungle. We, we could play, play Nottingham. Home games there. We could play Nottingham. So my counterpoint is, yeah. is that what England have always done very well is defend. And England, I said in the preview yesterday, Rog, I said that it's going to be the full-backs like are going to have to be ago. very, Feels very like good. like years ago yesterday. Frankly, our full-backs were not very good. Really not very good. They weren't good going forward. Yeah. They weren't Baines good at the back. Baines is not there back. to go forward. He's, He's not, not there. there to go He's back. He's there to be back. He's <laughs> there to play the guitar, to build up He's morale. And to be the best big-bottomed small, small that, that England, England has be. maybe ever produced. Yeah, possibly. But uh, they didn't defend very well. And frankly... Uh, the centre-back pairing never looked that comfortable. Cahill, certainly, compared to oh, the performances Jack's he has header. for Chelsea. Jag Jaggy Elker, I thought, had a better game than, than Cahill. Cahill, as good as he's been for Chelsea, is not there. And, and Joe Hart has this decision-making of a first-time drinker in Times Square on New Year's Eve. Oh, my God, he is just insane. I'm going to say two things, though, about England right now, Rog. I'm going to try and move forward through the first thing, which is I feel that we left our best two defenders at home in John Terry and Ashley Cole. I'm a Chelsea fan. I know I will be slayed for saying that. Unashamedly and unabashedly. And but no other country in the world would leave its premier centre-back pairing in its own league, which has been Cahill and Terry all season, would not have them go and play together at the World Cup. And if he's not good enough to start, he's certainly better than Chris Smalling and Phil Jones and anybody else who was there too. Have you got that out of your system? And Ashley Cole should be there. Okay, that's the first one. It's done. Let's move on. Yep. If England are going to move forward as a football-playing nation, we seem to have some progress that we're making in midfield and up front. We're going to have to grow some young defenders who can really move, Rog, who are footballers, who aren't just runners, who aren't just big guys who can knock it in with their head. Big we're going to have to develop some footballers. Okay. We've anyway. got that out of our system. Okay, good. I just want to say a big picture thing. I want to yeah. go back. We got some books. Oh well well do we have books? We do got books. We can, have can... we have some things that look a lot like books. There they are books. I can prove it. I read one this morning. Yeah. I'm gonna read it a little bit. I read two. One yeah. was a poem which actually reflects how my inners feel right uh -huh. now in America. It's called Darkness by Lord Byron. Oh. I had a dream. Yeah. Which was not all a dream, Rory mm -hmm. Hodgson. The bright sun was extinguished, mm -hmm. and the stars. That's how very much I feel Which right now. Which one's that? Uh, it, it, I, I, I took it out as a loner. Okay. It's not there anymore. But I did one of my favourite Italian writers, uh -huh. Primo Levi. Oh, he's was a good writer. He wrote, and he, I think this was the key to the game. He's no longer with us, Primo mm -hmm. Levi, but I think he was from the grave. He's younger than Perlo. He said, how <laughs> he said, how important is it in life? Not necessarily to be strong, but to feel strong, to measure yourself at least once, to find yourself at least once. And this man found himself at least once. Oh. When you did that for a minute, I thought yeah. you were Perlo. 
Do I suddenly it's look amazing. more attractive to you? Yeah, you do. do you want to sit Let me go down and get the Sabutio <laughs> out. No, I'm going to do that later. Um, what, what a man. What he's a man. what a man. But Let's do a pod for I the feel, three of us. Just the three of us. Can we get to Perlo? Are you, are you comfortable, Andrea? Yeah, can we get... We, I yes. would love Perlo on the pod. Yes, I'm very comfortable. Go on. <laughs> Perlo on the pod would be amazing. But before we get you to you... Smell great, Andrea. Before we yes. get to you, Andrea, yep. I just want to say that Italy... Love him. 11 players on that team yep. I thought were outstanding today. Yep. I thought Sirigu had a great game coming in to replace Buffon. Um, you know, really never looked very bothered. Nothing he could have done about the goal. Made some good saves. Big four. Started the attacks very well from the back. Just Italy are a team of 11 great footballers. 11 great footballers. You know, I'm very partial to the Italian side. Lots of my mates have laughed at me because I think Italy are going to be good at this World Cup. They are a world champion side. They've won the World Cup in the modern era. They've been, frankly, brilliant um, in major tournaments for quite a while. Um, we're just watching the goal, the replay of the goal again. Amazing <sighs> goal, that, for England. But it was oh, such a... It, it, it's a memory from long ago. Oh, this is the amazing moment at the end, Rog. It was the Joe Hart insane moment, and your boy, Phil Jags, knocks it off the line. But uh, Italy, what a team. They're going to be very strong in this World Cup. Here's my question for you, Rog. Before you get to Perlo, then I'll let you say anything you want. Go on. I don't think this is a, ultimately a bad result for England. Not bad I think it was... A, I, look, I'd rather have a 2-2 draw. I'd rather have a 1-1 draw. I'd rather have a 0-0 draw. I'd frankly be happier with England getting a result in the first game rather than expressing themselves, but I feel differently from you about that. But I don't think it's a bad result. I think with the result in the other game, unless, of course, Costa Rica are unbelievable and they tear Italy apart or get a point against Italy... Oh, by the way, suddenly... I don't know how the US beat Costa Rica 1-0 at home. <laughs> no. I don't know how that... And they were so... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, amazing. CONCACAF. This is the World Cup of CONCACAF. And by the way, this was, as many of you have tweeted, 90% mm -hmm. Rayon, at 90% Rayon tweeted us, very excited for this game. How will two UEFA teams play on a CONCACAF pitch? It was a very concacaf -y game. Yeah. But go on, ask me the question. Uh, well, no, just, uh, do you think this is a bad result for England? Do you Devo, think it's okay? When England normally play, Yeah. Uh, it's redundant for me to say, when England normally play and lose, I normally feel like I've just watched Beaches and Barbara Hershey has just passed away. But you often feel badly when they win or when they draw. You just, if they perform badly, right. you don't like 90 it. 90% of it is self-loathing. <laughs> okay. Okay, and self-harming. But the other 10%, the healthy 10%, it's, yeah. it's just full of mm -hmm. disenchantment, yeah. a sense of industrial revolution grandeur slipping through our fingers, uh -huh. empire disintegrating, never yeah. to be reclaimed, once a big dog, now a small dog pretending mm -hmm. to be a big dog. Yeah. Hate that. I used to have a small dog who thought he was a big dog. This Henry. He was Henry. a Cairn Terrier. Henry. Yeah, he was a Cairn Terrier. Thought you he know, was somebody, massive. It's one of you, and you know who you are. I can't remember your name. You named the dog yesterday Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> so because good. in support of England, I thought it the was most a child. Nigels. Oh England, no, it wasn't a child. England lost today, but they still have the most Nigels per acre of any country in the world. I didn't Number feel one. Barbara Hershey in Beaches Sad yep. Devo. I felt like I don't know how many of you have watched the movie The Great Escape. Yeah, one of in England they play it every month. I've watched it hundreds I, of times. I've watched it more than that. They play it all the time. It's one of the great movies. Steve McQueen. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't want to be? Put on a leather cooler. jacket, go in the cooler, boom, boom, baseball, boom, boom, glove, bam, boom, boom, back and forth. Boom, boom. But there wasn't the scene that struck me at the end of the movie is yeah. right at the end where I think it's Richard Attenborough. Yes, the, it is. The escape has failed. Yeah. But they had fun doing it. Yeah. They knew they were beaten. Yeah. And they go out to relieve themselves in the German they're field taken off, They're taken off in a, in a truck, right, yeah. by the Germans. Yeah. And given I think a his name's moments, Bartlett. I think yeah. the character's name is Bartlett. And they the say, uh, lads, we're just stopping. Go and yeah, take a walk in the a forest. Cigarette. Go Smoke and have a if you got them, boys. A little break before we move on. And they say, how are you feeling? And Richard Attenborough, he says something that reflects how I feel right now. He yeah. said, you know, in a funny way, I don't think I've ever been happier in my life. <laughs> and just then you hear the click of a German machine gun. And sadly... That's it. That's it for all those boys. But that's how I felt watching this game. Well, you said that at half-time, which half -time. was what was so funny. <laughs> one, one at half-time is exactly when you said it. I said, in a funny way, I've never felt happier in my life. Ultimately, Prandelli took this Italian team to the Confederations Cup, where they played some deliriously good football, but they also wilted in the heat. Yeah. And he said afterwards, I spoke to him after um, they were beaten in the semi-final, mm -hmm. and he said, what I, I've realised my big takeaway is I need 23 athletes for this campaign in Brazil rather mm -hmm. than 23 of the best Italian footballers. And that's ultimately what he brought. Italy 
dealt with the heat watching the game at home you started, yeah, to, wonder, say, you started to wonder why was the, why were the crosses flying over why was the italian goalkeeper kicking the ball they were cramping they were tired it was unbelievably yeah. hot italy were more prepared italy knew understood the conditions and england in that we, we will see as the players do their interviews and they describe this it was absolute torture but they're athletes Rog, the but they're athletes even the defensive athletes were great footballers and that's my point a couple of other observations yep. about the game Rog. Wayne Rooney seems to have a hair turf nursery growing out of the side of his <laughs> neck. And uh, I just find that amazing. I find it amazing. He's that... not only growing it for his own head, he's growing it for a few other people's heads too. That corner that he took, <laughs> he was taking it for Peralta, the, uh, the Italian left back. I think normally the players yeah. uh, swap shirts at the end. I think Rooney and Peralta swapped uh, the phone number for his, oh, uh, his hair doctor. But Rooney's corner was one of my yeah. favourite. The one that kind of you described it as shanked. It came off the it shank. It came off the hosel. It was like a lot of you tweeted us and said it looked like a, a, one of 50 cents uh, opening pitches of the baseball game. Yeah. Rain Rooney is going to definitely be scapegoated uh -huh. for, his, uh, for his moment of madness. Uh, you at home, whoever you are, unless you're Landon Donovan, I know you're watching Landon. Yeah. Um, you hey. scored as many goals in the World Cup as Wayne Rooney has. You've scored as many he goals. He had an as assist. Wayne he had a very good assist. Let's go through the goals, by the way, Rog, okay. talking about them. So, first off, Italy. Scored too early. Well, did, no, they, in the end, they in didn't. Italian. In the end, they scored too early. Uh, <laughs> it was a. Um, it was a. Really. Uh, it was the Polo run. Rog. It was the Polo fake run that dragged Sterling with him. He's so suave. Even when he jumps over the ball, he yeah. looks suave, David. Yeah. It was a really amazing, amazing yeah. first goal. Yeah. Um, it was a dagger. It was yeah. a dagger. But I loved how this English team responded. Yeah. I loved Within how two they minutes. Responded. And they took it on the chin. It was a fabulous pass from Sterling. Rooney, From the halfway that line. Lad Rooney. Yeah, managed Lad to, Rooney. Managed to conjure. He probably mishit it because it was so good, David. He yeah. probably mishit it. He probably didn't mean it. <laughs> and, and what no, he hit it with his hybrid. You can't shank a hybrid. Can we, can we talk about Sturridge? <laughs> That's why I use my five hybrid for 70% of my shots. I love Sturridge. Yeah. I love him. And I love him not just as a footballer, but as mm -hmm. a human story. A gentleman that was Man of projected to be great. Became redundant at yeah. Chelsea. Many players just fold after that. I just love how he had the will, the confidence, mm -hmm. probably the arrogance, single-mindedness, stubbornness yeah. to refine himself. Mm -hmm. and I, I, you said to me when he scored, you said that will be the first of many World Cup goals. This for Daniel Sturridge. I think he will score a lot of World Cup goals. I think he'll score a lot of goals in major tournaments. Worryingly for England, though, he did limp off in the second half. Not Could as have just badly been as the England physio. Oh, my word. After that We goal. love that. Gary Lewin dislocated his ankle, jumping up. Can we just say that again? He dislocated his ankle. That isn't even an injury. Well, Balak. I've ever heard of. In 48 years, I've not even heard of that injury. Balak walks in when we're watching a game. Michael Balak followed former Chelsea wonderful guy Bayern Munich lovely guy and he goes how does this even happen and we understood at that second his German mind couldn't even understand this <laughs> to us English people the only thing that was surprising about it was he actually broke his ankle celebrating an English goal rather yeah. than well of course they hadn't trained the England support staff the last thing they're trained to do is to is to uh, is to be celebrating an England goal and then <laughs> that insane moment before half time where uh, Joe Hart just stayed out of his <laughs> way, out of his out of his goal line, and almost invited Balotelli to make him look like the village idiot. Yep. Uh, until your boy Phil Jacks uh, at, headed it off the line. Hector Avesado tweeted us and he said, "At Men in Blazers, how on earth did Brad Friedel not make the England squad with yeah, that accent?" No. That'd be so amazing. Many, there's so many countries Brad Friedel could play for if accent was actually the prerequisite rather than birth or residential. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I think it's uh, the pace of the game, you realise, though, was going to destroy England. There's no way they were going to keep that up at half time. You also knew that Prandelli, a man of ideas in that locker room, would be chatting to his players and making tweaks, making little finesse moves, making little sophisticated little hand movements and subtle things. But you also knew Hodgson and the English one was more like, just keep pointing it up and at them. The Italians, what don't they like? They don't like it up and. They don't like it up and, David. And then a tactical change is going to be what, David? Fresh legs. Fresh legs. <laughs> Fresh legs. So run it. Fresh legs. One thing that occurs to me, Rog, yesterday, we, with our little Subutio guys, who I'll go down and get them in a minute, fair warning. Yep. Um, America, not We talked a lot about that England's plan to disrupt Perlo. They yep. did absolutely zero disrupting of Perlo whatsoever. And I dare say that when you see Italy play future games, 
you're going to see a lot of teams with far smarter plans for Disrupt Polo. I thought that was a huge weakness for England. They just gave him way too much space. So the other guy who had a fairly weak game today was Steven Gerrard. In the first half, you thought he might be conserving his energy for later in the game, but he didn't seem to have much more energy in the second half. Uh, I know he's in a sitting position now, but it just seemed very, very slow with Gerrard. It just didn't seem quite right for him uh, right from the very beginning. And when Gerrard is lacking that kind of influence on the game, I just think England are going to find it very difficult to win. To, to summate, Balotelli lifted... I've, actually, the only way it would have been more amazing was if he lifted up his shirt, had that T-shirt underneath... Why always While he was again. scoring the goal at the far post, that header. That would have been amazing. Have been if he'd have lifted up his shirt, <laughs> rippling 12-pack, and nodded it in, and then revealed on his back yeah. a why always me, or something. He'd, what would it have new one have been? Tweet us and tell us, at Men in Blazers, yeah, exactly what, would have, what been, it would have been. We would love to know. At Men in Blazers, hashtag Gillette Boot Room. And there are Rog. patches. We haven't reflected. This is our, this is our new World Cup uh, blazer that we had on, especially yeah. for England today. I had a red It was bad luck. I'm never wearing this on. again. You had your lucky tie on for England, too. I did. Lucky tie. Won't ever be wearing this again. Um, and this is... Uh, okay. Oh, you're going to see a beautiful man in a minute. Yeah. Italy. Italy has pearl like... Yeah. We're going to bring in a man who is the American version of Perlo. Come on in for a second, American Perlo. <laughs> oh, no, it's not Mark Connolly. <laughs> it is not Mark. You look nothing like. Uh, send in Mark Connolly if you can. America needs to see him. Thank you very the much. The American Perlo. Okay, um, celeb tweets yep. about England. For, well, celeb, wow. Hercules Gomez, Rog. Oh, I love Hercules Gomez. One of the great tweeters. Uh, no other team football. on earth but England's national team would fail to crack their domestic league's top four. Hashtag EPL Cray. I love it. Uh, at Lennox Lewis, a former uh, world champion boxer from England. Oh, well, England on to the next. On the bright side, still got to be feeling better than Spain right now. Oh, of course. we got we got to pick an enemy and go and, uh, Can I say, and, go and say we feel better than Spain. celebrities if they need so much back introducing when yeah. you actually introduce them. Tweets to the Men in Blazers about Perlo Rog from uh, Ali Cooler at Men in Blazers. 99% sure that Perlo never broke out of his jog or made a tackle. But yet, he was the best player on the field. Here that he is, is the genius. American Perlo. Yeah, American, American Perlo. Look, these two guys are doppelgangers. Come here, put your face here, Mark Connolly. Yeah. Let's get look right there. Oh, Sweet beard. Unbelievable. Yeah. You look very, 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 very similar. I've always found Mark Connolly strangely arousing, and now we know exactly why. He looks like Richard Marks with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Marks with a beard. He looks like an uglier James Brolin than Amity Bell. You look, okay. like, you look like a younger... You, to me, you look like a younger Andrea Perle. Mark Cullen. Brilliant. Okay. Sorry. Thanks, Mark. Nobody can hear you anyway. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what a fine-looking man. Uh, Mark Connolly, amazing-looking yeah. man. Can I just say... Just, oh, he didn't shut the door on the way up. To no. someone, okay, I'm going to shut rude. the door. You keep on talking. You don't come into Bob Lee's closet and not shut the door. <laughs> can I just say, to some mate, Dave Oak, yeah. you asked me if I felt sad. Yeah. There's two reasons. I, I thought it was a beautifully tragic performance. Uh, the things I liked it's like about a favela. It, the things it's I, as beautiful thing, and tragic as a favela. The things I liked about it were that England were almost like... Yeah. It was, there was a moment, 25 minutes of the first half, when they seemed to be like Dan Aykroyd in Trading Places, mm -hmm. Italy. Mm -hmm. And they were like Eddie Murphy. They changed these new... Pa they were like Peter Parker suddenly, when they couldn't realise they could attack. He'd just been bitten by a spider. Yeah. New powers, spidey powers. I was excited. Yeah. They lost. And I did. I felt it was probably the most beautifully tragic performance I've seen since Shailene Woodley in our <laughs> friend John Green, the fault in our stars. And the other reason I'm not that bothered about England losing, David. Yeah. USA. <laughs> USA. USA. You. Have we got two teams oh, in this World wait. Cup? We, oh, it's so this great. This is just our reserve team. Oh, no, We've it's got so our good. first team to play on Monday. We'll take it out on Ghana. Yeah. And I cannot wait. Yeah. I cannot wait. England, great in the front. Terrible at the back. They're like a Maserati, Roger. I've always thought the Maseratis <laughs> look so bad at the back. They always look like slightly cheap cars. And at the front, they look amazing. And that's sort of the New England. We're yeah. just going to have to get used to it. We're going to be a terrible defending, and we're going to be better going forward. But Hodgson has got to do something in the midfield. Uh, I think it's the centre of midfield. I know there were huge problems on the left. England just switched those problems onto the right, which is where the second Italian goal came from. Italy were the better team. Let's not have any doubt about that. England are going to have to play well against Uruguay, who are going to desperate uh, to come back after uh, their thumping.
today, Rog, yep. uh, by Costa Rica. Yeah, well, let's talk about the other games, Dave. Let's okay. absolutely talk about the other games. Yeah. Um, Colombia, Greece. Yeah. Very interesting game to me. Very interesting game to me. Yeah. Mostly because um, one of the things I feel is missed. This World Cup is very different to 2010. Yeah. It's got a lot of positives, yeah. such as good football. Uh huh. Positive football. Yeah. Goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a soccer ball which actually works, flies properly. It well, does. You, you miss, it's amazing. I miss the Jabalani. It, it's a different game, Jabalani well, football. But if th- they can play a futsal World Cup, they could play a Jabalani World Cup. Um, by the way, a great tweet from at Beagle Songs who tweeted, at Men in Blazers. Can you read that one out? Because I love it so much. I just want to laugh. And at Men in Blazers. <laughs> Jose Peckham and Sass like an alias. Carl Beckham would give it a frat party in a college movie. <laughs> that is brilliant. We're sending you a blazer patch for that. That's amazing. You get that, mate. You get that. So email us your address. Blazers at gmail.com. Colombia 3, Greece 0. That was a fantastic game. By the way, all three games so far today have been superb games. I feel like the and World Cup the really biggest came ones to come. How excited are you for Ivory Coast, Japan, America? You know, I love that national anthem. Just watch that game oh, for the Japanese national anthem. It. it ends in the middle. Yep. It ends in the middle. Um, Colombia win their World Cup opener for the second time, Rog, first since 1990. But it was the first goal, Rog. <laughs> the first goal by West Ham's Omero. It was... Not the goal, which was a bit conca cafe. Yeah, very conca cafe. It was the World Cup of conca caf. It was the celebration. He executed three incredibly difficult moves. He avoids. He evaded all the other uh, Colombian players who had run to greet him. Secondly, he made the sign of the cross. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Josie Peckerman would have loved that. He did it. He did made the sign of the cross loved as it. he was evading. Yeah. He found that moment to Evasion go and do it. Crossing. Made his mum happy. Yep. Thirdly, got to the sideline, choreographed dance routine yep. with his team. That is a World Cup goal Take celebration. Take England physio. Yeah, That's it, was a World Cup celebration. <laughs> it was superb. The other yep. game we've got to talk about, Dave, yep. because we have a lot. We have a lot of Uruguayans. We have a lot of Uruguayans who listen religiously to our... Uh, our show and our pod yep. and our, our feelings are with you aren't yep. they Dave it's probably Uri- totally. Uruguay against Costa Rica CONCACAF Costa oh, Rica yeah it's the World Cup of CONCACAF we yep. said it here 2014 the World Cup of CONCACAF this is our year yeah I have to say mm-hmm. Costa Rica remarkable Uruguay mm, I mean big names so many faults no cohesion just very little nothing remarking close to a playmaker in midfield is very good having the best looking How can striker you play? in the world Diego oh. Forlan when you meet him in person also he is absolutely gorgeous how can you play football when you're s- when you constantly have to look over and see Diego Forlan it's, it's impossible it it's to feel worthy of the shirt you feel lesser and the Uruguayan shirts were so tight how what were they David they were tight. they were more than that David big big mistake and yeah. I think this ultimately tactically really came back to hurt them yeah nipple constriction Mm -hmm. i mean i have to be honest the first half when i saw those shirts they looked like they've been painted on by the same bloke who does the the filthy kind of uh swimsuit edition in sports illustrated where they paint on bikinis onto Mm -hmm. oh they've got bikinis on but they kind of haven't for all you people at home you pg uh what do you call those people who like certain activities not metro spawnosexuals yes for all the spawnosexuals um brothers here's what i thought I was amazed in the first half that the Costa Rican defence wasn't just hypnotised by the the sight of all the um, the Uruguayan areoli that were on uh, that were on show. <laughs> there were a lot and of areoli. And then in the second half, it yeah. just turned on them that strategy. The hypnotising wasn't working. Yeah. And it just turned into a lot of guys, eleven guys in the heat with runners nipple. Yeah. And I think they paid the price for that. What was fascinating about that game is that you have yesterday Dos Santos for Mexico, Spurs reject. Yeah. Really delivering things for Mexico. And mm-hmm. in this game, Davo, it was kind of Arsenal's slight mystery man, Joel Campbell, who ultimately slayed Uruguay. It was, i got to tell you, Costa Rica. Costa Rica's performance was just fantastic, Rog. It was so impressive. The whole, just the way they approached the game. They look so good in those shirts. That is one you of the best shirt. looking Best shirt, shirt I've seen since I've Peru seen. 1978. Yeah, really a good looking shirt. I want to get hold of one of those for me. Um... It was the shirts, it was the overall performance, it was the passion, it was the tackling, it was the imagination. I think Costa Rica are good. And everybody's saying, oh, you know what, it's like, it's, it's good now, you know, coming out of that game. 
I'm more worried about Costa Rica than I am about Uruguay you right are. now. I Way more. Even I said Suarez that, I is said that to you. I said that to you a month yeah. ago when we taped the Grant Land po- uh, the video. And what and you, did I say? You laughed at me. You laughed at me. You Show, sneered, show you me said, the tape. You said CONCACAF in a very sneery way. Oh, Conquer let's Cafe. roll back We've the tape. We've taken back that word. CONCACAF pride. Yeah. I do love the well, Costa I think they're lovely. I love I them for great. another reason, I love David. Them. I love them. I love them. I love them. Can I tell you why I love them? Why? I love them because, as you said, they played of passion. Yeah. Commitment. Uh-huh. Pace, yeah. athleticism, uh-huh. endurance. All of those. These are words that Jurgen Klinsmann has tried to instill in yeah. his squad. Also not massive names. Yeah. Also not kind of fancied in any way uh, within the group. But I think we laugh at CONCACAF football. I adore CONCACAF football. If I had a fifth child, I would probably call him or her CONCACAF at this point. Yeah. Um, but I believe that these are the qualities that Jurgen is hoping to instill in this pacey, running, gunning, committed. And I think the one question is about confidence for this American side. But watching Costa Rica, I was thrilled, thinking forward, please God, please God, the God of Colombian goal scorers or mm-hmm. the God of Jose Peckerman, Colombian yeah. manager, please God, we will see with the U.S. against uh, Ghana on Monday. Okay. Cool. Um, Rog, that's yep. pretty much it for today. It is. Um, we've got to go and recover. I don't feel as bad as I thought I would feel. Well, I think I if feel, lost I this feel a little bit, Davo, yeah. as if I have, I've helped you through this. You have. Do, I, do you feel like I've helped you through it? Well, you're in such a bad mood this morning, and to see you in a better mood this afternoon, I think is amazing. I it is in a lifting bad mood my spirit. Because the bananas in this country are tiny. They're tiny. See, They're that gives me great joy that the bananas are so small. Well, we'll, Although bring, I must say, we'll bring one in tomorrow. I must say that when, it, when, just know this. That when you see a Brazilian in America, they are so freaked out by the size of American bananas. And they probably have some form of an inferiority complex about the size of their own bananas. And when they come back to Brazil, you know that weird thing when you come back from a long trip and yep. everything feels a bit weird. They yep. come back and, and they look at the size like, of their you, bananas. Do you think they've got, you think they're like, it's not the size of the banana anyway. It's, yeah, the, it's the motion it's of the this, edible fruit. Oh, but I think they're amazing. I just think bananas, when they, they come back so and people are like, did you go to Times Square? And they'll be like, yeah, <laughs> did you go to the Empire State? Mm. And they'll be like, what was the best bit about America? They'll say, why do I? The bananas. They're enormous. enormous. <laughs> they're absolutely um, massive. Well, I want to finish with one tweet. We yeah. love your tweets. Mm-hmm. We love your emails. Yeah. At Men in Blazers, at Embassy Davis, at Rog Bennett, Men in Blazers at gmail.com. And the Men in Blazers on Instagram. Great tweet from at Coastal Co. who says, the show is okay. It's a bit yeah. suboptimal. Uh-huh. But he says this, Dave. And let's close with this. Okay. I'm hoping for bigger headsets and a smaller closet tonight. Hashtag more headset, less closet. We'll see what Bob Lee will allow Hashtag us to do with Gillette, this panic room, room David. We'll see what happens. Um, that's it. So go watch ESPN FC. Go and watch this on ESPN. Click around all the amazing content on ESPN, on ESPN FC. FC. In fact, don't do anything else. ESPN Don't eat. Don't drink. FC. Don't sleep. C. ESPN FC. FC. It's uh, there. And get in touch with us. We're not getting enough Ravens down here. We need more Ravens in Rio. Come on, England.